welcome to the virtual uh, Carrington Research and Extension Center row crop tour. Uh, I'm going to give you a little update on what the things that we're doing in the dry bean breeding program. Too bad we couldn't do it in the field. Uh, however, I have been spending considerable amount of time in, in the field this summer uh, just looking at our nurseries and things that we had out there. As many of you know, our last season was quite challenging, right? Uh, actually, it's probably our worst uh, harvest season in, you know, what happened. Uh, everybody had a wet harvest. It was really hard to get in the fields. Uh, we had issues with shattering. As you can see, uh, issues with uh, flooding. It was too wet to get into the fields. And so actually my crew had to go and pretty much do this harvest almost manually in many cases. And even with that, we lost 50% of our trials were not harvested for, for all these issues. I think uh, with, the case, with the exception of the Minnesota locations that we were able to harvest and some of the research and extension centers, uh, we pretty much lost a lot of uh, yield data that we didn't have even for some of our cooperative uh, uh, trials that we have at the national and regional level, right? So pretty much with the exception of kidney breeding lines, uh, we didn't do any selections. It was pretty much a lost year for when it comes to selections in, in our program. Uh, all we decided to do was recover the seed from all our genetic material and everything was pretty much planted again, replanted again this year with the hope that we're going to have good data. I always say you have to make lemonade out of the lemons, right? With all that bad weather and everything, uh, John, one of my uh, assistants, he went out in November, mid-November, uh, and sampled, you know, all the samples at Prosper. This is at Prosper. He went ahead and pr sampled some uh, slow darkening plots and some regular darkening. And for us, it was after all that bad weather, snow, frost, you know, all the things that were thrown at these beans. We were really surprised to see the quality still of the slow darkenings, as you can see here. Pretty starkling. So, you know, I'm on the bad news. This is probably good news that proves again that slow darkenings are a good alternative, even for those years that we have these bad, uh, bad seasons, bad harvest seasons. Luckily, this year, things are looking much better. As you can see in those... Uh, in those pictures there, actually, this is the variety trial in the dryland variety trial in Carrington. So uh, for the most part, everything is looking good. This is my breeder nursery at Carrington right now. And here is a commercial field of uh, MD Falcon, one of our latest releases. Still, you know, in some locations, because of flooding, we lost uh, some trials uh, and things like that. So overall, I would say it's much we're much in much better shape than last year but again harvest actually my crew started harvesting some early material today uh, so this is officially the first day of harvest uh, we'll see how it goes okay everybody knows that uh, hopefully that we have a new black bean just released uh, early this year uh, everybody's excited because it's been a while since we had a black bean uh, higher seed yield and zorro similar to the yields that we are observing in Eclipse and Loreto, has the nice shoot down, dry down, uh, uniform dry down that we see in Eclipse that everybody likes. A little bit earlier than Eclipse, which is good. Uh, same upright front architecture that would allow us for direct harvest, direct combining. This is something new. This will be probably one of the few blacks that are resistant to rust in the region. Actually, T39, the old T39 that we used to grow many years ago, is also resistant. But as everybody knows, T39, I mean, you hardly can find seed now. And it's more of the older post-traded decumbent type that nobody wants anymore, right? Everybody wants these upright beans from now on. Uh, in addition to that, it has some tolerance or intermediate resistance to soybean seeds nematode and also to common bacterial blights, which is two issues we have in the region. But here is a picture showing the the seed. Uh, as you can see, you know, nice color. Uh, in terms of canning, we got uh, positive results. 
so far. Uh, feedback from canning companies say also the same thing, so we'll see how it goes with that. Uh, here's some foundation seed fields we had in Washington State of uh, Twilight. I also had the chance to see a few commercial fields this year here in the region, and it's doing really well. Here are some pictures pretty much showing that rust resistance. Here is this is the prisoner code for Twilight, but as you can see, it's completely clean versus you know some of the susceptible checks that we have around. Okay, here is the same picture. Here are some of the susceptibles showing symptoms, and Twilight is completely clean of symptoms. Yield, of course, that's one of the most important things, as you can see. 22 bags versus 24 Eclipse. This is across 21 testing environments or 21 trials, right, across the region. Uh, even using more data, uh, 50 environments. This is what we call unbalanced data, which means that not all locations were grown in the same locations, but still powerful statistics is able to give us some interesting numbers here. Uh, 22 bags versus 20, which is pretty similar to what we saw in the previous graph. Here is what I was trying to highlight. It's the only available variety right now with resistance to rust. It does really well for common bacterial blight as well. And you know, in a 1 to 9 scale, as you can see, it's giving us a 4, which is considered intermediate. Uh, all the other things like you know seed size and days to maturity and plant heights, it's pretty similar to all the other usual suspects, right? Uh, SCN female index, that's the way we measure resistance, is 26.9. That's compared to a susceptible soybean check that is 100%. So that, in their scale, in the Illinois scale, that would be moderate, moderately resistant, okay? Pintos, our most recent releases are here. This is the 2019 data that we could get from eight or nine locations. And, you know, again, it's kind of on par. They're a little bit behind uh, some of the usual suspect, but still, uh, I, I would say nothing is statistically different there. I mean, the numbers are different, but in terms of statistics, this will be considered all similar yields. This one, of course, Pegasus is surpassing any other uh, any other Great Northern variety out there. This is data from last year based on seven locations. And you can see five bags difference. That's huge, right? Same thing here. Look at uh, ND Whitetail, which is our white kidney release, mostly for Minnesota. But, you know, there's even some people growing white kidneys here in North Dakota. I was visiting a field last uh, Wednesday on, on this. Uh, compared to Beluga, which is the number one, two bag differences there. Uh, as many of you know, and many of you are actually already growing, uh, commercial fields of these varieties and there's gonna be we got some shortages of seed there was some issues with seed production last year that some of you are aware especially for Falcon I think after this year uh, that seed supply is gonna be much better uh, for for all these varieties I don't foresee major issues on, on terms of seed available right uh, this picture is actually from last week and it's a commercial field of uh, white kidneys. On one side you have white tail, and on the other side you have another white kidney variety I don't want to mention. Uh, but you can see the difference in the amount of disease. What you have here is pretty much a combination of common bacterial blight and hello blight. And as you can see, no applications, nothing. This is an organic field, by the way. Uh, so no chemical applications. And you can see how white tail is very, very healthy. Uh, in terms of those uh, bacterial diseases. I was really pleased to see that. And of course, the grower is saying, well, for next year, I only gonna grow white tail, nothing else when it comes to white kidneys. So that was, those are the good days, right? When you see something like that and it makes your day happy. Uh, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna stop there, but pretty much I wanna thank all the people that are involved in our, uh, in our research, in our work. Uh, this is not a job that I just do myself. This is a team effort, and you can see all the partners and all those agencies and institutions that are supporting our work. Uh, very important, the support from our growers, of course, and the checkoff system that we get. And of course, if you have any 
questions or any feedback, you know always how to find me by email. You can call to my office, whatever you need. Uh, we're here to to help and to. I want to hear your experiences with all these varieties and all these things. Hope it was helpful. Hope we can do this in the field next year. Uh, and I wish everybody a really good uh, harvest season that is coming soon. Right? Thank you. Thank you.